egg and egg and bacon sandwiches for breakfast cause it's good things to eat and I need a good breakfast in my belly to get me going. What is going on everybody? It is your boy Raf here and I am here to give you my experience at Good Things Brisbane from Sunday just gone. Tell you what, uh, I'll cover this off some early stuff before I get into the bands. Uh, you know, look, Brisbane public transport's not the greatest. I mean, you know, Australia generally doesn't have great public transport, but compared to Sydney, Brisbane's not quite as good. That said, it was reasonably close to the main train station in the valley, so it wasn't too bad getting there. Uh, I went down a bit earlier than I had initially planned. They had the gates open already. They were open from like 9 or 9.30, something like that, so they could get everybody in, people could get where they needed to be, rather than, you know everyone congregating and then 12 o'clock hits and all of a sudden you got tens of thousands of people trying to rush in and get to the bands that they want to see uh with all that heat it was going to be a bit testy with that many people buzzing around so i think they made the right decision there <clears throat> um excuse me little horse uh they had um they were pretty good conditions on entry you were allowed to bring a certain amount of like food in in certain ways so you know they were pretty chill about a lot of stuff uh they were pretty relaxed about the bag size rule all that good stuff so you know look everyone was just there to have a good time uh i'll give you my overall thoughts on the day at the end but for now let's jump right into the first of the bands so first up we had The Plot In You, uh, I wasn't familiar with the name of this band, turns out I had heard a couple of their songs in the past though, um, but yeah look, I was really really keen on them, I thought they did a really great job getting everybody going for the day, people were into it, as you can see people are moving around a bit there, they really managed to get the crowd jumping, uh, really great starter for the show, definitely deserved to be on here, um, but yeah like really really impressed early on and it was a great way to start my day off. Alright, now we get to the first of the bands that I had on my list to check out for the day. So this, if you don't know, is Aussie band Stand Atlantic and when I tell you that these guys blew me the fuck away I am not fucking kidding like I had heard a lot of good stuff these guys came highly recommended I went in with high expectations and I was still impressed uh, they were up there in the middle of that heat and humidity in fucking VB trackies jumping around the place they had the crowd going mental for most of their set and moving around uh, really hot a lot of respect to them as well they started a song and they realized someone was in trouble so they stopped the song they had security get the person make sure they were okay and then they started the song again to finish out their set so this is a great band stand atlantic if you're not familiar with them get familiar with them go and check their stuff out because they are absolutely going places and you're going to want to be able to be saying that you were there from early on Right, now we get to the one that I think is the band everybody wanted to see. Let me tell you, that tent filled the fuck up when Slaughter was about to come on. Everyone was ready for it. Everyone was ready to experience this for the first time. Uh, you know, their first ever shows in Australia. For most people, the first opportunity to ever see Alex the Terrible in person. And uh, just get to see what all the fuss was about and when I tell you that that crowd was ready to go bananas they went fucking bananas man like it was just heavy song after heavy song smashing riff and crushing drums the whole way through and you know Alex's voice stacks up live he's not superhuman like some people seem to think he is but he is extremely good he is extremely talented and he knows what the fuck he's doing on stage. He knows how to work the audience despite his limited English. And the people were just down for it and ready to experience it. Uh, 
Okay, now I will admit, here's where I took a little bit of a break. When I tell you that the heat in this tent was off the charts, like, yeah, okay, we were in the giant tent, so we were out of the sun, but it was trapping all the heat and humidity in there, and with thousands of bodies crushed in together, there was no air circulating, so it was hot as a motherfucker. It was just suffocating in there, so I did have to get out for a little bit during Make Them Suffer set, but I caught a little bit of it, I caught a few songs. They did a really, really great job. They were, you know, the crowd was into it. As you can see, there's a bit of moving up the front there. They did feel like, I mean, look, anyone was gonna have trouble following Slaughter to Prevail. So, slotting in between Slaughter to Prevail and Sepultura, I think Make Them Suffer really did a respectable job here. They really did a great performance and uh, I would definitely go and see them again. Okay, time to out myself as a poser here. I am a fan of early Sepultura with Max and Igor still in the band, but I have never really engaged or listened to any Sepultura after that period. I do know they've obviously had a very, very lengthy career after that time. They've managed to maintain a great career, uh, but I just haven't checked any of it out myself. So. I was keen to see what these guys had to offer in this iteration of the band. 40 years of Sepultura, by the way. And look, I was not disappointed. I am absolutely going to go and check out some of the post-Max era stuff. Because, look, this iteration of the band, very, very, very impressive. They went up there, they played a bunch of new stuff, a bunch of old stuff. And the crowd was into it the whole way through. Uh, I have missed an opportunity in not being into this version of the band for for you know oh, quite a while now so i'm definitely going to remedy that and they were the last band that i saw in the tent before i headed to the main arena so look killer killer band absolutely brought the energy and the crowd was super into it So like I said, it was around about now that I moseyed on over to the main arena to catch everybody's favorite Spongebob theme song cover guy, Corey Taylor. Uh, I had heard he was doing a mix of stuff from all across his career, so I kind of knew to expect that going in. I'm not overly familiar with his solo material, but, you know, I was keen to see how it all went. Um, I did manage to get a seat in the shade, but that did necessitate being a fair way away from the stage, which is why my footage is a little bit crap. Uh, look, Corey Taylor's Corey Taylor. He always brings 110% to every performance that he's doing, and this one was no exception. He was up there stomping around with just the microphone. He obviously hopped on the guitar for a bit as well to perform some of the Stone Sour material. Uh, and look, yeah, was a, I don't know who, who's in his band there. It's probably some names that I should know. But the crowd was ready for it at this point of the day, even though the heat was really starting to get to some people. Like, you could tell by this point in the day, the heat was starting to get to some people and really kind of drag them down. But everyone was so excited for Corey that it just didn't seem to matter to, to a lot of people. Uh, Corey also closed the set out with a beautiful rendition of Don't Change by In Excess. I thought it was a very, very nice touch to close with a cover of a, such an iconic Australian band. And I feel like that was a very intentional choice on his part to pay homage to, you know, being in Australia and touring in Australia. So, uh, really impressed with the solo stuff. I'm going to have to check out some of the solo material, but he just nailed it on every front and so did the rest of his band. Now at this point in the day, I was really starting to get fucking tired because I didn't get much sleep the night before and I just needed to get some caffeine in my fucking body. So I went down to find a bar, get some more food in me and of course I checked out the 666 stage 
and they were doing this live band karaoke jam and old mate was up there having a go at uh, at Walk by Pantera and all I could think was man look he's out there giving it his all he's having a great time and everyone just seemed to be having a great time on the day so you go buddy Now, by the time I got back to the main arena, I was there to catch the last little bit of Bullet For My Valentine. Uh, a band that, you know, I'm into a few songs, but never was super duper into, but uh, it seemed like they were playing a lot of the older stuff. So, you know, I had a great time watching these guys. I haven't seen them live before. And I thought they put on a decent show. Some people have said it wasn't their best, but I don't know. I don't really have anything to compare it to, so. They, you know, I caught the songs of theirs that I knew and really liked, and the crowd was into it. It was a bit harder to tell because they're a bit further away from where I was sat, but the crowd did seem to be going. The band was up there giving it a good, good old go, and 20 years, 20 years, this, this, these guys have been around now, and that just makes me feel real fucking old. So, um, yeah, it was glad, glad to have caught them. I don't know if I'd go and see them again, but that's just because they're not super super duper like high on my list really but they're still really good and they had a great set time for I prevail now again I hadn't been necessarily planning on watching these guys, they were just kind of there while I was waiting to see other bands that I wanted to see, but I am so glad I caught this set, because while I am familiar with a few of their songs, I don't really know anything about the band, I didn't even realise they had two separate vocalists, so that was news to me. Uh, they put on an absolute beast of a show. There, by this time, you can see the sun was starting to go down. A little, little bit more of the area was starting to get shaded. Um, people's, you know, but this time it's getting a bit later in the day, right? People's energy is starting to, to be a bit impacted and, and really kind of struggle for some people to keep going with that. But this is a band that you want to get the crowd hyped. I mean, at one point, I mean, not at one point, multiple points through the set, they had just had fucking flamethrowers going up at the front of the stage. So... Like, there you go. Like, that's going to get everybody hot. And they put on an incredible show. They were moving around. They were getting the crowd moving. I will absolutely go and see these guys again, for sure. They just owned that stage and really, really deserve to be up there. So now we're getting near the end of I Prevail set. You can see the sun's low enough and behind some clouds now that everything's kind of out of direct sun. That was a great relief. It was still really hot, but it was able to help people out a lot. This really was filling up at this point now. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to see, oh my God, a wild Brody appeared. <laughs> and now we come to kind of the oddball of the day, I guess. Um, you know, it was definite genre whiplash going from I Prevail to Devo, and then from Devo to Limp Bizkit. It just felt like a very, very unusual choice. They really felt like the odd ones out. Uh, I just, I don't know who was going to good things to see Devo. It really felt like they were just kind of there. Uh, but I guess I can cross them off the list now. Uh, I don't know if they had some technical problems. One of their guitarists seemed to be having a really bad night, but maybe I'm just not familiar enough with the material and it's meant to sound that way. But at a couple of spots, it did look like he'd broken a couple of strings when he was trying to do some, you know, guitar solos and that. So, uh, they had like four costume changes in the space of, uh, like... 45 50 minute set which was odd but you know they've been around for 50 years and it's odd to think that Devo's been around for 50 years and Sepultura's been around for 40 
and you just that that doesn't really gel in my head but you know they were there they they did a great job it was just a very odd choice for the day i think And now the headliners, at least the headliners for me anyway, because I didn't stick around to watch Fallout Boy. Limp Biscuit was the main reason that I was going. They were the headliner for me. Uh, you know, I've been a Biscuit fan since way back in the significant other days. They opened and closed the set with break stuff, which when you've only got like 50 odd minutes or an hour, I, I guess, um, they really focused on their old stuff, which was a bit, you know, like obviously people want to hear the classics. I was kind of keen to hear some of the newer newer jams, like they didn't break out Ready to Go, they didn't break out Dad Vibes or anything like that, which I kind of thought would have been part of the point, but maybe with these festival shows now, they're just wanting to play all the classics and because that's what they figure people want to hear. Uh, as always, Wes Borland's outfit was fucking hectic. You can see it on the screen up there. It was some weird, like, I don't know if it's meant to be Cthulhu-esque or whatever was going on. Um, you know, Fred Durst was doing his business, man. Uh, at one point, they got a granny up on stage because she wanted a hug. And then she was just, they were letting her jam out on the side of the stage for the whole set. Um, I mean, look, Limp Bizkit's Limp Bizkit. You know, if you've seen them before, you know exactly what you're going to get. And they delivered. The crowd was going wild for them. Everyone was singing along, even all the way back where I was. People were dancing around, singing along to it, just having a blast, getting down with their favourite 90s jams. And so there you have it. That was my day at Good Things. Uh, overall thoughts, it was quite well run. Um, you know, they seem to have plenty of security there, plenty of staff to help people out when they needed it. I don't feel like any of that was too intrusive on the day, really. Not that I experienced, at least. Uh, there was a police presence there, but I, again, I never, never felt... Like that was, you know, overbearing in any way. Like I said, they were they were allowing people to bring a certain amount of food in there. Uh, they did say that, you know, no bags are bigger than an A4 piece of paper, but they seemed pretty relaxed on that, if I'm being honest. Like they even said you can bring in an empty drink, plastic drink bottle, but there were people going around with those big steel drink bottles as well. So I don't know if they just got missed or they were allowed to bring them in or however that went. Uh, didn't end up raining, which I guess kind of, I mean, might have actually been really helpful if it had rained a little bit and cooled things down. But as it was, the heat was just the worst part of the day. Uh, the heat and humidity just would not let up. That sun was extremely intense. I don't care if people thought I was a fucking lame ass for putting sunscreen and shit on. Like, I managed to avoid getting burnt. So, uh, you know, I'm going to chalk that up to being a win. Uh, it, look, the drink prices at the bar weren't that bad. Um, they were about the same as what you'd get in the Valley. I think it was like $7 for a Red Bull, uh, 15 for a Red Bull and vodka or something like that, which is not too extortionate, if I'm being honest, compared to what you'd pay elsewhere. Uh, the food prices were ridiculous, and I think I got handed a bottle of Coke that had been sitting in the sun for three hours, because it was literally hotter to drink, like the drink was hotter than the food that I was given with it. Um, and they were charged, some places were charging like $10 for a, a frozen Coke. So the food vendors were obviously, you know, having to rake. And I, look, I don't know what they had to pay to be there. So I what they've got to try. I don't know their business models, but the prices were extremely high on that stuff. But the bar itself, like the main bars that were being run by good things were not too bad. Uh, I got over to the stage five just as Hanabi were finishing. I didn't get to check them out, unfortunately, like I'd had wanted to, but just the timing kind of didn't work on that. Look, generally, I think it was pretty well run. I didn't go last year, but by all accounts, it was much better run than last year's one. Uh, look, 
I would absolutely go to Good Things again after this experience there. I think it was a very well run day and every band had put on a great show from what I'm hearing. I don't think any, I haven't heard of anyone saying that a band put on a bad show. Um, all the bands I saw certainly were very, very impressive. The sound was pretty solid through the whole show. I think during Limp Biscuit set, there was one little section of some technical difficulties where the screens went down for a little while. So if you were further back, you really couldn't see as well. But that was really it. Like, I don't have anything to complain about. The day went really, really well. Uh, I bailed after Limp Biscuit and got the train home. But so I don't like I don't know if Fallout Boy was any good or not. I just hold my hands up on that. But yeah, it was a great time. Thank you very much to all the bands that came and played. Thank you very much if I ran into you and we hung out for a little bit and chatted and whatnot. Got some photos together, all that good stuff. Didn't end up getting to interview people because it was just kind of too hectic. It was too much going on. There wasn't really any way to do it that was going to be workable. So we just kind of left that off. And uh, thought I'd just... Your video's long enough as it is. Y'all don't need to see any more from me with that one. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will catch you guys on our regular interviews later.